this video is the good, the bad, and the ugly of maintenance. Um, before before I get too deep into the video, um, I'm gonna tell everybody right now I, I'm still doing maintenance, so the good outweighs the bad and the ugly. There's gonna be more bad and ugly than than the good, you know, uh, as far as the amount of things. But still, for me, at least at this point, the good still outweighs the bad and the ugly. We're gonna start with the bad. We're gonna continue with the good, and then we're gonna end up with the ugly. Uh, let's start with the bad. Uh, well, before we get there, I've been doing maintenance for a few years now, and I've I've got a bit of experience. So, so I've I've lived through all these experiences. I mean, there's guys that have more experiences than me, and 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 if you guys would like to share share them with with us, you know, I'd be more than uh, happy to share it with 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 everybody. But I'm gonna start with my experiences. The bad, the bad number one thing. The bad is the uncle, and that's something that's that's gonna happen almost at every at every. Uh, company that you work for at every complex you have to do on call and it, it doesn't seem that bad at the beginning because some companies pay okay for the on call where i'm at right now they don't pay uh, at all i mean they, they pay just just the, the least they can no no mileage no no extra time nothing but there's companies that pay okay but it's still still the uh on call is still going to be uh something that, that that'll that's one, something that i consider bad um you, you may have a family come over that weekend or it may be today's 4th of July. It could be 4th of July and one of my uh, friends is on on-call right now. Um, last, uh, you know, last time I was on on-call, it was a Father's Day and I spent all my, my day, my Father's Day on a, up on the roof fixing uh, units, AC units. So you're going to you're gonna end up losing your whole week. You're going to end up losing uh, a lot of events. Uh, you want to go to a restaurant. Your family wants to go here or there. You got family from out of town. You can't really do much because you're the on call, and and sure enough, whenever you plan on doing something, you're gonna get called. So that's that's really the worst part of the bad, and you're gonna get called for the worst things at the worst times. Um, if the upstairs apartment ever breaks a, a water line and it floods the downstairs apartment, and there's two flooded apartments, it's always gonna happen at two in the morning, and where everything's closed, there's there's nothing you can really do about it. I mean, just just shut everything off and see what you can find to fix it. Uh, at least temporarily, and then call an extraction team to pick up and the mess. So those those type of things are always going to happen at that time. So that's one of the bads. Another bad is uh, um, you practice a lot of trades doing this. You 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 practice a lot of straight. You you practice you know plumbing, electrical, HVAC, uh, swimming pools. You know fixing swimming pools or maintaining swimming pools, but you really master none of them. I mean, nobody consider, considers a a, a a maintenance guy a very good HVAC tech, you know, or a very good plumber or a very good electrician or, or none of that. So even though you have the tools and you practice a lot of trades, you really don't master any tools, any any uh, trades. And, and you may be, you know, really good at some trades and other things, but nobody really considers you a, a, a tradesman on any other trade. So so you just do a lot of trades, but you really don't master any of them. You're just good enough. I mean, we all try to be the best we can, or at least most of us try. But uh, it's it's really hard to master, you know, be a master plumber if if you do plumbing once or twice a week. So of course you're not gonna be that. You're not gonna be better than the guy that's doing it every day, seven uh, five days a week. Um, another thing is, a lot of tenants they 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 think of you as their handyman or their employee or their or something like that, and it gets frustrating after a while because, you know, tenants, you go in there for a simple work order and they say, hey, can you do this? And I need you to do this and uh, stuff like that. And, and it, it gets to you after a while. That's that's one of the bad things is uh, tenants start thinking of you as their, their employee, like everybody's employee. And e even though you're there to help them and take care of the complex, you're not really their employee or their handyman or none of that. Uh, the way I combat that is I always tell them, you got to tell the office. Even if it's something really simple, like I need some slats, yeah, you got to tell the office, and 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 they'll write a work order and bring them in, because because they'll get you and they'll start pushing you and pushing you, and pretty soon you're you're, you're carrying things for them, and and you can't go there. Uh, that's another one. Another thing that happens is you end up buying a lot of tools because 
you, you're doing a lot of different trades and, and let's say today you're doing plumbing and you need this, that, and the other. And then on the weekend you go and buy it because you're going to use it, you know. So as the years go by, you end up accumulating a lot of tools, a lot of tools for this, for the other. So you have, we have, some of us have different uh, tool bags or pouches where we carry plumbing tools, electrical tools. And the, so you end up buying and collecting a lot of tools for a lot of different trades. Even though you don't master any of the trades, you need to have the tools for all those trades because you're going to, you're going to work on all those trades. So that's another bad thing is you just, just have a lot of uh, tools. Another bad thing is this actually pays less than the trades because they're not going to get, they're not going to pay you as a professional plumber, electrician, or, or HVAC tech. Even though you do most of the plumbing, electrical, and HVAC, they're not going to pay you their wages. They, they're just considered the maintenance guy. So it, it 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 can pay pretty good after a while if you're good enough and you and you and you practice your trades and you become better. But it doesn't start paying like that. It it they don't consider you good enough for for those wages. So that's one of the bad things about this business is um, they just don't consider you good enough to to make that kind of money. And sometimes we, we, we know the complex better and we know the, you know, the plumbing or whatever the issue is. Uh, we may know it better than, than, than the, uh, the tradesmen coming in, but, but still, they're still going to make more money. So that, that's one of the bads is they, they're not going to consider you at that pay rate, uh, at least not at the beginning. Uh, the, the other bad thing is you end up dealing with a lot of upset tenants because if somebody's toilet gets clogged and they're having a miserable day, and you're over there fixing somebody's air conditioner and they expect you to go drop what you're doing and go fix their toilet right now because they need it or, uh, you know, wh whatever it is. And if you don't do it right away, to them, that's the biggest emergency in the world at, at that moment. But you're dealing with somebody else's biggest emergency at that moment, too. So you do deal with a lot of needy and tenants that are really upset or, or don't understand why things don't get done right away when you need them and when they need it. And... It, it's it's something that you have to learn to deal with. Uh, people are not necessarily mad at you. you. If 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 you catch on to that, you'll be okay. So I've seen some of the maintenance guys that really get upset when when a tenant gets like that with them, and then they get worse with them. Um, but that's one of the bad things. Now we're gonna go into into the good. Bef before I go any further, if you guys are like, are into maintenance and stuff like this, I have a whole bunch of videos on this channel. Uh, or, or if you're just starting on maintenance, uh, I would invite you to subscribe to my channel because I'm always doing these types of videos. I do a lot of videos for homeowners too, you know, repair, simple repair, stuff like that. But but I, I concentrate mostly on, on maintenance. Okay, we're going to start with the uh, with the good. And this is this is something that, that that's really big for a lot of guys, a lot of uh, people. It, it's the, the Monday to Friday hours, in the 7 to 3.30 or, you know, somewhere in there. That schedule is just perfect, and we love it. Um, that's one of the reasons I stick around with this. I, I poured concrete for over 20 years, and my schedule could be I could I used to live in Phoenix, so we'd start pouring at 11 p.m. and then work all through the night, and then go home next day at 10 or something like that. And those those were just hard, miserable hours, but we had to do it because you can't pour concrete in 100 you know 115 degrees in Phoenix, so you got to pour it at night. And a lot of other trades, like the restaurants and stuff like that, there are hours all over the place. And this is this is just a Monday to Friday job most of the time, and it's a seven to three thirty, which is perfect. And that that's one of the one of the really really good things about this trade. Other thing is we work no matter what, rain or shine, we're still working. Uh, like I said, I, I poured concrete for a whole bunch of years, and if we didn't pass an inspection or 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 the dirt guy didn't pass an inspection, we couldn't pour or we couldn't set form, so we'd be delayed. And we could, we, I was making more money per hour, but at the same time, I was losing a lot of time. Um, sometimes, you know, you like, especially in concrete, you, you have everything set up, then they can't get you mud or concrete at that time. Or something happened, the batch plant broke, you go home. Um, a lot of the co construction companies, they, they, they have worked for, for a while, then they got to slow down for a bit because, because, you know, they're waiting on new contracts, stuff like that. So there's a lot of downtime. And this type of business, it, it's always rain or shine. You're going to work at least your 40 hours. Um, so this, that's, that's what another good thing about this trade is, is at the end of the year, you may make up about the same amount of money that you would in one of the trades sometimes if, if, if you got a lot of downtime. Another thing that's good and it's, 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 it's been good to me and I like it. That's one of the reasons I do maintenance is you get to meet a lot of people. Um, you, you, you start, uh, 
you work at a complex for a while, you start meeting, you know, the 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 the, the, the friendly ones, the mean ones, the, the, this one and that kind. And you, you start making a lot of friends. And, and, and pretty soon you know about their families and then their, their kids and their grandkids and stuff. And and, and it, it, it kind of starts becoming like a friendship with, with some of the tenants. And that's one of the good things that I like about this job. When, when Like I said, when I did trades, we, we only met, we only knew the guys on the, on the crew and that was, that was about it. And, and in this business, you get to know a lot of people depending on how big the complex is, you get to know a lot. And, and and that's something that that's always uh that's something that I do like. Uh, another thing is you're always learning in this trade. You're always learning any any trade. You're always learning. I I, I know that, but in this trade spe- specifically, you're learning more because you got to learn a little bit of how to fix a refrigerator, how to fix a stove, how to fix and, and not just a refrigerator. There's a whole bunch of different uh, brands and makes and models of refrigerators. So you're always even if you know how to fix tear one refrigerator apart, the whole thing, put it back together. Next year, they, they come up with a different refrigerator, and you need to know how to fix that, air conditioners. So you're always learning different things, and, and I enjoy learning. That's something that I really enjoy So uh, and, and practicing what I learn. So that's that's something good about this job is, is that you're always learning. You're never going to know it all, or, or you're going to meet a guy that thinks he knows it all, and then he may not know something that you know, and, and you'll know something he doesn't know and stuff like that. So this is a this is a good job if 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 you like learning and practicing what you, what you're learning, it's good. Another thing about this job that I really enjoy is that it's it I think it's a pretty healthy job, because we do pools, we do ground, so we're outdoors, we do air conditioners, sometimes we're fixing you know painting curbs and uh, doing all kinds of things that that are outdoors. And especially nowadays, lately we 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 already knew it, but now we know more that vitamin D is really important, and you get that through sunlight. So this is one of the jobs that, that you're going to do plenty of exercise. You're going to be outside a lot. You're going to be, uh, you know, uh, uh, being out in the sun, getting your vitamin D, uh, walking a lot, doing exercise. A lot of the complexes have steps, so you're walking up and down steps. And, and that's a pretty good workout. But at the same time, when it's really hot or really cold, you may be inside of an apartment painting with the air conditioner or the heater on. And even though you're still active, your body's active, and you may not be under sunlight, but but you're still gonna be when it's when it's really cold or really hot. You're gonna be indoors with with the conditioner on. So I think it's a pretty healthy job. It it stay it keeps you pretty active. It keeps your body in movement and but it's not that heavy. I mean not that stressful on your body. So I consider that a, a good thing. Another good thing that I consider about this job is there's a lot of alone time. Sometimes you're doing turns or you're doing grounds or vacuuming pools and stuff like that. And you're just it doesn't take two people to do that. So usually you're alone. And one of the things that that I've learned that I've practiced a lot is is I got a set of earphones and my phone, and I'm always li- learning. Or, you know, people lo- love mi- listening to music, and, and that's fine too. But in my case, I love learning. So I'm always e- either listening to audiobooks, podcasts, uh, YouTube videos, all kinds of things that that, uh, that while I'm, I'm working, I'm learning. Uh, or there's a lot of books that I haven't read, but I've, I've listened to on, on uh, audiobooks. And, and I love it because I'm, I'm doing two things at once. I'm, I'm still working. I'm, I'm getting stuff done, but but also my uh, I'm learning. So so that's another good thing about this job is you can wear earphones and and uh, as, as long as you can still hear when somebody calls you. But you, you can you can uh, you know be active while still learning. So that, that's that, I consider that a a good thing. Another good thing for me is you get to be a. Uh, I know I said you you don't want to be anybody's a. Uh, um, you know, uh, like a labor or worker for for the tenants, but at the same time you get to help them, and that's a good thing because when it's when it's 105 degrees here in Tucson, and and uh, somebody calls you, and this happens a lot, and it's elderly people or people with little kids or whoever it is, and you get to go up there and you fix their air conditioner, and then and they're really 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 grateful with you because. It was just so hot, and they were thinking, "Wow, well, this may take a week or two. I don't know when they're going to fix it. And you get up there, and you, you're able to fix it and within a half an hour, an hour, or anything. Or unclog a toilet or fix their stove or uh, whatever the case is. And, and I think people really, really enjoy that or like that when, when uh, you get to help them. And, and I enjoy helping. So that's one of the good things about this job is that, that it's its own reward at the same time because you're getting paid, but at the same time you, you get to help people and and. It's just, for me, it's its own reward, and that's something I, I really do like. Another good thing about this, this this trade is this job is not affected by the economy. Right now, we're, we're, in a, we're, we're, we're up on a peak. 
the economy is always a uh, uh, going up and down. We we know that it, it's always happened. It doesn't matter who's the president or you know who's in charge. It's just the economy always going in cycles. Right now we're at a peak, and and we know what, what, what comes after that. It, it's always going to be a dip. But in this in this particular uh, trade, it doesn't affect it. If you're building houses, yeah, it's going to affect you because when they stop building houses, you're going to have to find something to do or get paid less or or work less hours or or, or stuff like that. But if you're a maintenance guy. People will always live in apartment complexes. So no matter how the economy is doing, people still need to live, live there, and they still need to have a maintenance guy. Matter of fact, I think more people go to complexes when the economy goes bad because a lot of people lose their homes, stuff like that. But they still got to live somewhere. So this this trade is not affected by the economy. So in this trade, we're not really scared of uh, those dips or whatever. Uh, it, it's it's always gonna you're always gonna work no matter rain, rain or shine, the economy good or bad. You're still gonna you're still gonna be okay. Another good thing is is if 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 you become a good team with your with your management, it, it could make for really easy days, really good days. Um, I've I've worked with some great managers where where we understand each other. Uh, they don't push you a lot. I mean, they they expect things to get done, of course, but they're not gonna pull you from from a from a whatever you're doing and pull you over here, and then that five minutes later pull you over there and pull you over there. And no, they they know that that you know what you're doing and they'll let you work and and you guys make a great team. They never throw you under the bus. You never throw them under the bus. So you can make, you can make a great, great team with with their management, and that's always a, a good thing in this job and in this particular job because if your manager and you are in a, a good team and get along great, it, it just makes for really easy, really good, good days. Now we're gonna get into the ugly, and there's there's a lot of ugly too. Uh, this is something that I left for the end of the video because uh, I don't want anybody to. Say oh, I don't want to do maintenance because of these things, uh, but they're there, and and we're gonna talk about it. I, I I'm still doing maintenance, and I love it, so I don't want to detour anybody from doing maintenance. But I do want to talk about the ugly. Um, it's not to dis like I said, it's not to discourage anybody. It's just we're just gonna talk about it. First thing is, people are dirty, or people can be dirty. Not everybody. I go into some apartment comp uh, apartments that. I don't even know where to set my tools. People are just really, really nasty, dirty. I mean, I've, I've been into apartments where there's cat hair and poop and stuff all over the place, and I don't even want to set my tool bag anywhere. I'll, I'll go get a cardboard and put it there. Um, that's one of the things that will really get to you. If you got to unclog a toilet and it's, it's really dirty and it's really nasty and you all, almost got to puke, uh, that's, that's really one of the ugly. And, I mean, it's not for everybody. But if you can deal with it, you'll be okay. But it'll happen. You'll you'll find it. Even in in really nice complexes, you're you're gonna find some dirty people. Dirty people have nothing to do with with uh, being rich or poor. People are just dirty. Some people are just really dirty. I've been to, I work right now. I work in a really, I I want to say a really bad complex. And there's some really clean people there. But there's some really dirty people. Too. But I I worked in better complexes where where I mean they're really expensive, but people are still dirty. So it's got nothing to do with with being. You know, rich or poor, people are just dirty or clean. So you will find a lot of dirty people. Another thing is bed bugs. And this is a big one for me because I never want to bring bed, bed bugs to my house or to anybody else's apartment. So you got to be really, really careful and vigilant of bed bugs. So, you know, wherever you put your tools, make sure, make sure you don't put them on like on a sofa or a carpet or none of that. Uh, you always got to be real careful, you know. As the years go by, you start noticing, you know, you, people that, that you may think may have bed bugs. You can't never assume they have them, but you're always being careful. You go home, you put your clothes in the dryer before you, you know, before you go inside your house and stuff like that. And so you're always vigilant. You're looking at people because bed bugs, they, they bite and you can see, you know, people that have been bitten by, by bed bugs. But it's something that that's one of the uglies. I mean, that's one of the things that that's in this business. You go into people's apartment. It doesn't matter again if they're rich or poor or clean or dirty. Bed bugs can be anywhere. At, at you know, it doesn't matter. Of course, the dirtier places will more likely to have bed bugs. But even even people that have money and and uh, have really nice apartments, you, you can still get bed bugs there. So, bed bugs. That's that's one other thing. Another ugly right now is is there's no help. Right now, at this moment, the economy is is good. It's moving. Most of the maintenance guys have no reason to stick around doing maintenance if they can do more money in the trades. Even as a beginner, they could, or you know, as an apprentice, they could do more money in a trade than than they, than they can do here at maintenance. So a lot of the guys left. 
we're we're stuck with no help. I mean, we we're managing over 100 units by by just just one maintenance guy. And it's not that they're not trying to hire anybody. It's just that nobody wants to, you know, do it right now. Of course, when the economy cycles back down, we're going to have plenty of help. But right now, that's one of the uglies. Um, uh, there's just no help. They're, 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 we're just trying to catch up as much as we can. But it, that's one of the bad things about, you know, maintenance right now. Another one of the ugly things that can happen is, like I said, you can make a great team with with your management. But at the same time, if if you have a manager that's scared of tenants or doesn't know how to deal with tenants or is new or doesn't have experience or it can make for a horrible horrible hor- horrible uh, existence. Uh I've worked with maintenance with uh, managers that that they're calling you every 5 minutes I need this, I need that, I need the other and you're thinking you just called me 2 minutes ago to you know go fix an air conditioner now you want me to go do this and now 5 minutes later you want me to go do what do you want? Tell me what you want because I, I can't be, you know, I, I'm just one person and, and I don't, it doesn't take me a minute to fix an air conditioner. And they, they can be really difficult because if, if, if they don't have experience and they're just pushing you and the tenant goes in the office and tells, I need this done. And then they call you right away or they text you, I need this done right away. And then five minutes and then there's no control. Um, that could be one of the things that, that could make this job really hard. If, if your manager is inexperienced or gets pushed around really easy, Nothing gets done at the end of the day because you're doing a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit over there, but you really can't really do much because you're just, you know, getting pushed all over the place. So that's one of the uglies about this. This is uh, I hope you guys all, if you guys doing this, you guys have a good manager that, that you guys can make a, a great uh, team with. Another thing is uh, it, it's, it's a never-ending trash, what do I want to call it? It's just trash all over the place. Especially at the complex I work right now. I'll do my grounds in the morning. And then I, I go back. You know where I started. And there's already trash. Especially at the complex I work at. People just open the door and just throw their trash out there. And they say, nah, the maintenance guy will get it. Or they move and they just put all their furniture next to the dumper, dumpster. And they expect you to throw it in there. Or they they, they, they buy a whatever. A refrigerator. No, not a refrigerator. Uh, anything. A television. And they just throw the box there. And you have to cut it up and put it in there. It doesn't sound that bad, but after a few years, it'll get to you because people are dirty. I mean, people are just dirty. They 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 don't care. People will leave their trash out there. They're expecting you to go throw it, and it'll get to you. That's one of the things that people, some people are just really dirty. I mean, just really, really dirty. Like I said, you go into their apartments, and it's not even not even healthy sometimes. So that's one thing that'll get to you is uh, dirty people. And they're going to be at every complex. It doesn't matter if they're rich or poor. You're always going to find dirty people. And just just be mindful of that. Um, there's going to be trash. You're going to be picking up a lot of trash all the time. And you're going to say, why didn't you, they just put their, their bag inside a dumpster? I mean, they walked all the way out here, but they leave it. Like Mondays, I show up to my complex I work at, and there's 20 bags of uh, trash next to the dumpster. And the dumpster may be halfway full. But no, they didn't want to throw it in there. They said, no, the maintenance guy can throw it in there. That, that's what they're paying. That's what we're paying him for. It'll get to you. And so that's one of the uglies. Don't let it get to you, but it's gonna happen. And just expect it. Another thing is the company is getting really, really cheap. I don't know if it's the companies, the managers, the regional managers. They're they're getting really cheap. Nowadays, it's really hard to place an order. I mean, you're trying to place an order, and it's got to get approved. If if you want to ask for uh, you know keep some. Uh, uh, kitchen faucet in stock and you ordered five they're gonna say no that's so many and there's why just the one tell me which one you need tell, let me know what apartment needs it and then we'll order it rents are going up i mean it's not that they're not making money i mean they're making they're making their money because i mean rents are going up people are paying more our wages are not going up but rents are going up but they're just getting really cheap with with parts and materials it's getting really hard to order uh, you know Companies now, the, the, the regionals getting really, really, I, I, I figure they're just making more money, the regional or the, or the management company or the managers making their, their you know, their, their bonuses on, on just keeping their budget low. But it makes it really hard for us maintenance guys to do work. And it just slows everything down. Uh, tenants get upset because they don't understand, hey, you're raising my rent, but I can't get a, I can't get a kitchen faucet for three days. What, what do you mean? Yeah, we don't have it in stock. I got to order it. You should have it. Well, we don't, and they let they let you know, but but we, you just have to deal with it. It's the way it is right now. Just management companies are getting cheap, 
Uh, nobody wants to have uh, any stock. I mean, I'm sure there's still a few good ones out there, and I'm bad for those. But uh, the majority of them are just getting just getting really, really cheap. And they're trying to save money, I guess. You don't save any money. They don't really save any money. It looks like they save money that month, but you don't really save any money. But that's the way they're running, so there's nothing we can do about that. Another one, and this is my last one, is, uh, and this this is a, uh, this this is not necessarily a bad thing, but it can be a bad and dangerous thing. Is people on drugs? We go into a lot of apartments, and people are just, I mean, pots legal now. I mean, people shouldn't be smoking pot in their uh, apartments, but pot's not even a big issue anymore. Now it's 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 other drugs. People are are just high on different things, or or not even not just medicines or stuff like that. People can be aggressive, people can be mean, people can be uh, a lot of different things. So it's one of the things that uh, that you got to be mindful of. It's, it's one of the uglies of maintenance. Uh, you'll see it a lot. I, I go into apartments and I see people that are heavy drug users and I, I can tell and I, I feel bad for them. At the same time, I don't want to touch anything. I want to be real careful. Uh, I don't want to you know, upset them or make them mad because I don't know how they're going to react. So drugs are something that you got to be really mindful of. Uh, once once you do this for a while, you start you start noticing who's who's dangerous, who can be dangerous, who can get triggered really easy. So that's another thing is you got to be mindful of that. Just just be careful of that. And well, I, like I said before, I don't want to discourage anybody from this job. This is a good job. That's why I'm still doing it. Um, there's complexes that are better than others. I know you're always, there's never a perfect complex. I'll, I'll let everybody know about, you know, that's never going to happen. But there are some complexes that are more difficult, and there are some complexes that are a little easier, and they pay better. And it seems to be that the easier ones, the newer ones, the higher-end ones, pay better and are a little bit easier in a way. People can be more picky in those, but... And the, the, the you know, the Cs and Ds... They pay less, and there's a lot of work, all plumbing, all electrical, so you're always going to be in in a lot of issues. Anyways, thank you guys for uh, watching and listening, and I hope you, everybody has a, today's 4th of July, so I hope everybody has a, a, a great and safe 4th of July.